Well, we got 10 minutes or less. So what are we going to talk about? I guess we could start here. See, I have no desire when it comes to it, to write about the external world, to describe it. And it doesn't hold much interest for me, you know? The whole world out there is getting along just fine without me setting toward a description or digging of it, but running around like a drunk little college girl, giggling and throwing party hats all over the world. You know, sprucing up the words, good old ornamentation, aestheticizing, whatever you want to call the act. Basically, I just don't find a use in going around dressing up like a dope. Plus, the world to me, eh, it's perfect just the way it is. No need for me to go trying to figure it out, roaming about in my thoughts for the great aha moment, because there is no aha moment, you know? Because it's all, I guess, just one big aha moment. It's simple. Everything is simple. It's simple in its complexity. And everyone trying to go around writing mud and things up, making the world more difficult than it needs to be, I tell you, uh, it sort of burns my balls. But writing it's the interior that engulfs me. That holds a real interest for me. The interior world, that description. Eh. That's not the issue. But also, don't get me wrong, I love talking about the external world and how I butt up against it. I do. But it's through talking, not writing. You know, when we speak of the world, the other day we speak it to Claire, just you, face to face, or at least here, voice to voice. You know, you and me. So come here, let's grab a beer, you. Alright, see, the first thing that struck me once I moved back to Chicago was the warmth in relation to San Francisco, you know? The warmth of the people, the intimacy we have as strangers when we don't know the other. See, last summer I just realized how fucking, I don't know, just how wonderful it is here. Just to make it very simple. It's a cliche, but it's true. You know, we're a no bullshit city. You is, you is, you are, you are. You know, just represent yourself correctly. The intimacy we create with our fellow citizen, you know, is wonderful because that's what we are, right? Of course we say thank you and then excuse me, unlike San Francisco. But I'm talking about intimacy here, mano y mano. I don't even know what that means. But anyway, see, it begins in the eyes. On the train, on the street, that moment when you look someone in the eye and they look back at you, and you smile, and then they smile right back at you, and it just sort of makes your day. It's one of the few things my father said to me when I was a kid that was worth two shits, was after meeting my stepfather. He said to me, you know, someone that can't look you in the eye and keep it, there's something just not fucking right there. You can't trust a man that won't look you in the fucking eye. Trust me, arms. You look people in the eye when they talk to you, and on the street you acknowledge them. And they'll know what's what with you. You know, represent yourself. Of course, this did come from a man who used to scream at his hair in the mirror as if it could respond, but eh, I guess it makes sense. But really, with no eyes, what you hiding in there? What's hid under that skin? It's from me, from you? Whatever it is, I sure as shit probably don't want to know. It's like even people that don't look at each other, you know, in the fucking, I don't know. Something off about that. You know, I also may not even believe a word of what I just said, but that's not the issue. See, here in Chicago, like any, you know, my major metropolitan city, we're living on top of one another in the stink of this beautiful place that, for some reason, we built on a swamp. And we're all in this together, you know? You and me and the shitstorm we were born into, we might as well laugh about it. And we do laugh about it here. We laugh about it, fucking everything here because everything is a riot. And you and me, we know this. But to laugh together, we first have to look each other in the eye. You know, the other day, I was on the L and I saw this older black woman, you know, this good-looking older lady. And she looked at me, and I looked back and smiled and nodded my head in recognition. You know, not like a what's up, but a bobbing nod. And she laughed at me, with me, and said, that's right, that's right. And she was right. See, being in San Francisco for five years, I couldn't, it seemed, to pay a hooker to look me in the eye and sustain it. Something cold about that place, something impersonal, something that shuns the intimate. I don't know, I walked around day in and year out, and looking at people in the eyes, trying to, and was given a return look as if I was violating them. As if I had no business in my eyes. Men, women, it didn't matter. I couldn't believe and still couldn't believe. I mean, when I got a dirty look sometimes, I'd be like, girl, or boy, don't, f you know, don't flatter yourself now. I'm just looking. Your eyes, your face, they're interchangeable. I'm just trying to build a temporal thing here. Just a moment of intimacy. I'm talking five, thirty seconds tops. It's a nice form of recognition, but eh. The city was full of itself and it spiraled down to the people. Can't blame them. But on a side note, I don't know how you can be leading America as they thought when they act like they were born in a barn in relation to one another. Oh, I got mad love for California. You know, like I got mad love for a fucking hole in the head. See how I get sidetracked? It's okay. Where were we? Oh, okay. We're on the street now. It's, you know, it's a save Van Buren and Wells with the poop. Man, it's been beautiful, about, huh? 
you know, it's been like in the 80s and 90s, and this is the weather I'm talking about. It you know, makes your hairs on your arms stand up. That's what we live here for. But, you know, so whoever you are or I am, it doesn't matter. Shit, we'd probably hate one another once we opened our mouths, you know? I'd probably cringe at the way you insist on saying milk, when we all know it's called milk. Uh, but that's not the issue. The issue is looking in the eyes, you know, slowing the world down around us for a moment. Just you and me and the gays, all 30 seconds of it. And it's a beautiful thing, really. It makes my day. You know, this shit's a bitch, right? But some days I open my eyes and there you is. And it's like I have a reprieve. A short one, but still, you know, something nice between us. Yeah, every day dozens of people make my day just by joining with me in the intimacy of sustained eye contact. Fuck, it's so simple. But so amazing how it just drags my whole body down in the best of ways. You know, because really it's like a whole history is being recounted in our eyes, you know, in the reflection. This one moment, this one gave, it's an entire history. It is. It's our history of you and I here in our passing eyes. So, you know, we best make it pleasant. Because uh, I personally wouldn't mind you thinking poor of me. You know, and then we both move on with our separate lives. But it makes, in the end, living all that much more beautiful and endearing in the city. It makes it easier. The intimacy we create. You know, here when I look a woman in the eyes, a real looker, right? She looks back nine times out of ten and smiles, and I smile. And it's no objectification. Come on, it's recognition, it's warmth. It's I see you. Yeah, I see you. It's mutual admiration, and nothing comes of it, because nothing was supposed to come of it. It doesn't need to, and that's just the way it is. But, you know, on occasion it does. You know, for instance, now it must have been about a week ago. You know, I found an old socks pin of mine. Uh, has a socks emblem inside of the outline of Illinois. I've been looking for it for a year now. I bought it when I was in San Francisco. I finally found it, so I was rocking it for about a week or so. But anyway, so I was on the island. I was going to Roosevelt, and I saw a father and son in socks gear, and they were going to the night game, apparently, because I overheard them. You know, because they were talking about it, and I caught wind, and I began just looking at them and smiling. Uh, you know, the way they were interacting, the father and son, it was cute. So, you know, you watch it. But, you know, eventually I met eyes with the dad, and we smiled at each other, and he said, you know, I like how you rocked that pin, my man. And, you know, of course, I was in a suit, and the pin was on my lapel, and I looked at him, and I laughed, and I said, you know, it's the most important part of what makes a suit. And we got to talk about the socks, and I found out it was the kid's first game at the cell. So I asked him, so who's your favorite player on the socks, huh? He told me it was Jermaine Dye, you know, he's no longer there, but now he likes Gordon Beckham. I said, yeah, but he's dogging it, huh, this year? Yeah, but he'll probably pick it up, or we can hope. But I told him, you know, you're going to have a blast from the game. It's a beautiful night for ball. And, you know, maybe you'll see a homer, get some fireworks, you know. But, you know, at the very least, you know, you're going to have a great time, you know, just in, spending time with your dad at the ball game. There's no better way. You know, and we talked some more. And, uh, you know, we got to Roosevelt, and I told him, you know, this is my stop. But, uh, you know, have a great time at the game. Enjoy your first game. I enjoyed talking to them. And then, right before I got off, I thought a moment, and I said, fuck it, and I took the pin off my lapel. And I looked at the kid, and I reached out to him. I said, here, take this. It's a socks pin. You know, it's a good pin. And the father looked at me and said, oh, come on, man. You don't have to do that. And I said, hey, come on. Don't worry about it. You know, I enjoy talking to you guys. It's just a pin, you know. It's his first game. Something to remember it, right? So I gave him the pin, and gave him a little nod, and walked out. And as I, you know, was leaving, he screamed at me, go socks. I looked at him and raised my hand, like, yeah, I heard you. You know, said go socks. You know, and that's it. You know, that's all I got from you. But, you know, sometimes something comes from the eye contact. Something of intimacy. And, uh, you know, something that for me, you know, is worthwhile and rewarding and everything else. If I, if we didn't meet eyes, if I wasn't looking at them, you know, well, we just would have went on our business and we wouldn't have had that nice, short, 15-minute interaction. But, uh, I don't know. It's been a long weekend. This is all I got for you tonight. Nothing grand, but just a little thought. But, you know, now it's time for you to go. You now, seriously, I'm tired of looking at you. You know, you're kind of weird looking anyway, so get out of here. Oh, I'm just kidding. Anyways, look at me. Who am I to talk, huh? Look at this goddamn hair of mine. That's with these swoops left and right. And, uh, and just look at the way I'm chomping on that pick, huh? Sort of makes me look like a Muppet, don't you think? The way it's contorting my mouth. Uh, what, what you gonna do? But anyway, seriously. I've had enough. Get out of here. Plus, gotta get back to this massage, huh? Let me tell ya. <laughs> it's a fucking good one.